Hey everyone, it's Jody here. I'm so glad to be back on my personal channel. I know that it's been a while, and I always say I'm going to do better when school starts, and I never do better. It's like the first couple of months of school, I do pretty good, and then it just tanks off the longer I go. But this is my last semester in grad school, so I'm looking for some career choices, and then I'm looking for other grad programs at the same time. So you'll see me a lot more often. I'll have a little bit more time on my hands. So what I want to talk about in this video is about being an older trans guy and kind of where I'm at with my life and how my personal life is going in a sense in regard to my transition. So um, to start this off, I feel I've had a lot of good medical doctor, medical practitioners and a really awesome new endocrinologist in my life to always kind of ask me where I want my transition to go, you know, what do I want to do with my body, what do I want to do with, like, my chest, what do I want to do with my, you know, my bottom half of my body, and so my, first, my, oh, my answer has always been I want to get out of school before I ever think about doing anything with my bottom half of my body, so bottom surgery was, po like, not, it's always been there a little bit, but it's been last on the list, having a hysterectomy has always been last on the list for me, because I'm like, I gotta get out of school, like, this is my focus, I have to do this. And one thing at a time. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, though, while I was in school was have chest surgery. I did that, I'm two and a half years post-op, and I'm almost four years on T. And so, being 32, almost 33 in January, um, I have to start thinking about things of what to do with my female organs. And it's not something that we all like to think about or consider about doing anything with. We just sometimes like to ignore them, and that's fine, but it can be very problematic. A lot of complications can come up with in regards to ignoring them and not getting pap smears done, and not getting checked up if you need to, if you're having pain in that area, or if you're having a menstrual cycle while on tea, that can be very problematic as well, and I'll kind of get into that. So, um, I've always wanted children, at least one, um, so I need, I have started making some steps towards what my future is going to look like as possibly being a parent. And so right now I'm working with the VA um, to figure out what my next steps should be, what I should be considering and where I'm at right now. So what I'm doing next week is I'm actually having an ultrasound done on my ovaries and my uterus. And what we're looking at is two things. One, to see if my ovaries have atrophied and what that is pretty much is they just shrivel up and do nothing for you, and they're just sitting in there basically doing nothing, and they could be rotting, I don't really know, they're just not doing anything good, and they could cause a lot of um, health problems later. And then the second thing that we're looking for is that if my ovaries haven't atrophied, then we're going to be looking for a follicle point in my ovary, which what that will indicate is that if I go off hormones for a short period of time, then I will be able to produce viable eggs a lot easier to harvest them and then have them cryogenically frozen for later use. Now, if that follicle point is not there, that doesn't mean, oh, you know, it's just not worth it um, and stuff like that. No, it just means that if it isn't there, it will take me being off of hormones longer to get a follicle point started um, and then be able to produce viable eggs. I literally just have to re-jumpstart my system somehow, which is just being off of hormones. Um, and probably going on, probably, prenatal vitamins and stuff like that. I'm not really sure. Um, my endocrinologist and I didn't discuss this yet because we wanted to wait until the ultrasound's done to see where my starting point is at. Um, and so then I have to make decisions, obviously, at that point that if, one, do I want to harvest my eggs if it's going to be super easy, and how long I want to keep them frozen for, because the longer that I freeze them, I just have to spend like a yearly fee for the company to keep them available to me, and then I have to make that decision. On top of that, um, I also, if it's going to be harder, then I have to make a decision on if I want to be off hormones for an extended period of time to re-jumpstart my ovaries to be able to produce viable eggs, or if I just want to have a hysterectomy at that point. And the only, I feel like the only option for me, if, if my ovaries have atrophied and they're not doing me any good and they're going to eventually cause me more medical issues in the long run, would be to have a hysterectomy at that point. So, 
Um, it's kind of a worrisome. It's like troubling on my mind to think of all these three things that could happen and the decisions I have to make. And, um, I'm doing alright though, I'd like to say. It's just taking it one step at a time, not trying to think about the worst thing that could possibly happen. And if I do get a hysterectomy and I do not decide not to freeze my eggs, it's not the end of the world for myself. Because one, I could always adopt children. There are hundreds of children that go every year um, unadopted. And so there's that route that I've also been considering. I've actually looked into that. On top of if I want to have some of my genetic coding into a child, then I have my brother I could ask for him to sign over his parental rights to his sperm and do all of that legal shenanigans and do it that way when I have a partner. So, um, it's going to be an interesting next few months on top of everything else that's going on in life. So, uh, I'm going to cut it here. If you guys have any questions or concerns or comments or anything you'd like to leave me in regard to this video, please do so down below or you can always eat message me and I will see you guys next time. All right. Peace.